in the heart of some of the most secretive labs across the world. Scientists are working on tools so powerful that it could rewrite the very essence of life itself. From cloning a sheep on a molecular level to creating glow-in-the-dark cats, we now have the power to edit entire species to our needs, for better or for worse. This is the history of CRISPR, the tech that could bring about the age of designer babies. Our earliest understanding of genetics can be traced back to 1863 in the writings of Gregor Mendel, an Austrian priest who spent most of his time trying to figure out how do traits from parents get passed on to their offsprings. He called it the principles of inheritance. For his experiment, Mendel used over 28,000 pea plants, breeding them in all sorts of ways. He found that if a yellow pea plant is crossed with a green pea plant, all the offsprings would be yellow. You might remember this from school as yellow being the dominant trait and green being the recessive one. He then crossed only the yellow hybrid pea plants and noticed that one in every three peas turned out to be green. This is where we get the infamous idea of skipping a generation. Green was present in the first generation, it then entirely disappeared in the second, only to reappear in the third. Although Mendel's findings were somewhat limiting, the quest to figure out the inner workings of genetic inheritance kept us searching for over 100 years. Back in 1944, physicist Irving Schrodinger published one of his most famous works. And I'm not talking about Schrodinger's equation. He published a book called What is Life? In the book, Schrodinger tried to answer the question, what is the essence of life? He posits that in its most basic form, life is information that had to be stored in some sort of a molecule and passed on from one generation to the next. This was a radical idea at the time. But it turned out to be true. What you're looking at is the first photo of deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. It was captured by Rosalind Franklin, an X-ray crystallographer at King's College London. Two scientists from Cambridge, James Watson and Francis Crick, built on top of Rosalind's work to come up with the double helix structure of the DNA. The dawn of genetic engineering was finally upon us. But before that, I think it's worth taking a minute to understand what a DNA actually is and why is it so important. Now, let's say a man and a woman boink, or in sciencey terms, a sperm cell fertilizes an egg. At that point, something magical happens. Inside the fertilized egg, a completely unique DNA is created. And as the fertilized egg goes from an embryo to a grown-ass baby, segments of the DNA decide if the baby is gonna have brown eyes or blue eyes, or if she's gonna be a fan of K-pop. These tiny little segments inside the DNA are what's called genes. Not just that, your DNA inherits a bit of information about your parents and your entire ancestry, tracing all the way back to a woman in Africa. And that's why you have your mom's eyes and your grandpa's cooking skills. One more thing, every living thing on earth, from teeny tiny bacteria and viruses to your pet chihuahua, every living thing has a DNA. Mendel's questions about genetic inheritance were finally answered, but new questions emerged. Questions like, what happens when you take one animal's DNA and stick it inside another animal's DNA? Or more importantly, can I have X-ray vision? Like most scientific breakthroughs, gene editing was discovered completely by accident. For millions of years, a war has been raging between viruses and bacteria. In the early 90s, scientists were trying to understand how do these bacteria defend themselves against so many different types of viruses. And what they found was astonishing. When a new virus invades a bacterial colony, most of the bacteria die. But some bacteria continue to fight on. Using their less effective defense mechanisms, they eventually find a way to defeat the virus. Now, to better prepare for future attacks, the bacteria stores a tiny piece of the virus's DNA in its own DNA. Using the stored DNA, it creates a specialized virus detector called guide RNA along with high-precision scissors called Cas9. The moment a similar virus attacks again, the guide RNA detects the virus and the Cas9 scissors chop off the virus's DNA, killing it instantly. This system of cutting and editing DNA is commonly referred to as CRISPR. <sighs> Clustered regular interspace short palindromic repeats. The discovery of CRISPR was a big deal in itself, but what came next was nothing short of science fiction. If you enjoyed the video thus far, 
do hit the like button. It's the only way the YouTube AI recognizes me. Share the video with someone you know and see how they react to it. And for more top sevens and documentaries on science, tech and research, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. In 2012, Jennifer Dotner and Emmanuel Chipontier published their seminal paper that shook the world. They showed that CRISPR wasn't just a tool for bacteria, it could be used to edit human DNA as well. And in theory, if you could edit your DNA, you could turn your blue eyes into brown or make yourself super strong or super fast. With CRISPR, scientists today have engineered crops to survive climate change, create animals resistant to diseases and pigs that could be organ donors for humans. The possibilities are endless. But because the CRISPR technology is so novel and risky, experiments on human DNA that could be passed on to future generations are banned in almost all countries. That didn't stop a scientist in China from trying it anyway. In 2018, a Chinese scientist announced the birth of twin girls whose DNA had been altered. He had edited a gene that made the girls resistant to the HIV virus. The world's first designer babies were born. The news sparked outrage. The scientific community condemned his work not just for the ethical implications, but for the risk of experimenting with human lives. He was soon arrested by the Chinese authorities and banned from conducting further experiments. The identity of the twin girls still remains a mystery. As it turns out, the gene that was edited to make these twins resistant to HIV also affects memory and intelligence. And so, nations around the world call for a moratorium on human gene editing. But the genie was out of the bottle. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Today, scientists can cut and edit any part of the human DNA with incredible precision. But the question we need to ask is, should we even be doing this? It's not a stretch to imagine a world where the rich modify their babies to have super intelligence, leaving normies like me behind. Or even worse, we could see a world full of CRISPR kids engineered for traits that society deems desirable, like kids made just to work in coal mines or fight wars. Either way, the misuse of this tech could lead to a catastrophic social divide. But what do you think about CRISPR and its capabilities? Let me know in the comments down below. You would imagine that Nobel Prize winners like Jennifer Dotner and Emmanuel Chipontier are the best that humanity has to offer. But sometimes Nobel Prize winners could be absolutely terrible, terrible people. So check out the five Nobel Prize winners who turned evil. I'll see you there.